It's my pleasure to inter introduce David George Brooke. He's been a speaker, teacher, life coach, and a best-selling author for over 25 years. He is a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 40 years. He specializes in teaching people the benefits of living a life of gratitude and specifically the advantages of using a daily gratitude journal. As the author of the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and Gratitude Nuggets to Chew On, Dave will show us the transformative, transformative power of gratitude. He was recently featured on New Day, a program with Margaret Larson on Teen TV, and chat with women on the KIXI radio. With 300 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, and over 35,000 viewers have seen his message. He is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. Please welcome David George Brooks. Thank you, Barry. And I wanted to thank not only Barry, but Michelle West as well for inviting me. And 16.2 uh, minutes is exactly how much time I have, and I will be very respectful of that. So um, let me ask by a show of hands, how many here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? Wherever I go, from 20 or 25 up to about 1,000, it's always about 80 to 90% of the room. And it tells me that people have gone through all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be just people. It could be loss of business and homes. And I used to manage the Lowe's store over here for a couple years. And I'm sure they were suffering after the bridge went under. And of course, the regional managers and stuff wouldn't care. But whatever. It's any kind of a loss. And so how are you going to deal with that? Well, let me tell you what happened to me. September 29th, 1998, it was a Tuesday. I woke up, looked over in bed, and I couldn't find my wife. That's strange. I wonder where Dana is. And just then, my four-year-old, Connor, comes in. Where's mom? I don't know. So we go to, walking down the hallway. And then Kyle, my 14-year-old, comes in. Where's mom? I don't know. So we, look, we walk down the hallway. We look down the stairs. And down in front of the washer and dryer, here's Dana, face down, kind of curled over, curled up in a ball. So I roll her over, and all this stuff's coming out of her mouth. Connor starts crying. Kyle runs up and calls the fire department. Within a few minutes, We've got just, te we're just teaming with people, probably 15, 25 people. It's the paddles, it's the wires, it's all that stuff you see on TV. It's the most surrealistic thing I've ever seen. And for those of you, and I'm sure there's uh, many in this group, if not some percentage that have been through something like this, the thing that hit me the most is that when you're in shock, time loses all measure. And this little short fire person comes over to me and says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half, and we still don't have a heartbeat. Would you like us to continue? And I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. And what made it so compelling for me is that in shock over the next two or three days, you walk around in this blur, and you, you, the, the little sleep you can get when you try to wake up from it, you realize, oh my gosh, this is real. I thought maybe I had this terrible nightmare. I walk out on this deck, and I look out to the sky about two or three days later. For the first time in my life, hopefully the last, I realize why people kill themselves. I don't think I can do this. Connor's just this high and Kyle's 14. I've been through a number of things in my life. This was just the, 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 another part of a long list. My mother had died of cancer. My father was a very prominent attorney in Seattle. Attorney. He committed suicide with a shotgun. Two of my best friends when we graduated from Queen Anne High School. It just went on and on and on. And today I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to get really to the kind of the meat of this whole thing. And that is it depends on how you look at something. Every one of you is going to look at something differently, but you have to decide how you want to look at it. And I wanted to survive. So just to prove a point about how we look at things, could everybody please stand up? And it's early in the morning. This isn't like aerobics, but I want you to stretch out your right arm as high as you can. Feel that good stretch in there. And turn it in a clockwise motion. Okay, now, I know there's no clock. There's a clock over there if anybody's confused. But it's, it's like this motion, okay? That's clockwise. Now keep turning it clockwise. Feel that stretch. Now bring it down slowly. Keep going clockwise. Bring it down to your forehead, your eyes, your chin, your chest, and now your waist. Now what direction is it going? Counterclockwise. Okay, you can sit down. I had a good friend of mine who I've spoken for a couple of times call me last week. He goes, you know the, the circle thing you do? What's the trick? 
Do people actually stop and change? I said, no, you're looking at it from the top and from the bottom. It's just, it's clockwise, it's counterclockwise. Oh, okay, he actually thought there was some trick. And there's always somebody that's still going to I change. It's just my illustration of how you gotta look at things. And you can make that choice every day. When I speak a lot, and then when I used to run those Nordstrom stores and even Lowe's, I always tell people, at some point you have to decide, you can't go straight on this road anymore. You gotta take a left, you gotta take a right. You can't go straight, because straight isn't always working. And with all these deaths that I dealt with, which is really, unfortunately, what kind of has, has ended up defining me, half of them were their, of their own making. And what had happened with Dana, she died of a prescription pill overdose. And she'd been in treatment, we met at Nordstrom, she'd been in treatment and she went back and forth to treatment, she got arrested. I'd never seen a person arrested like this before for prescription fraud, is ridiculous. But she couldn't overcome this thing. I went to see this doctor who was doing it at uh, the, uh, at the uh, Everett Clinic for addiction. And he says, come on in. Are you David Brooke? Are you Dana's husband? They said, yeah. And he goes, sit down. I want to talk to you. I've been doing this for 35 years. He said, see all those people out there? And Dana was out there with a bunch of other people. And again, any size group I ever talk to, I always know there's people who have dealt with this, especially when they come up and talk to me afterwards. And I said, you know what? He says, let me explain to you what you're up against. See, he's a doctor. She's an attorney. There's your wife, Dana. There's somebody else. And they try to make you feel better because these are just everyday people. But really, all you care about is your loved one. He says, here's the odds. One in 20 will make it back to a normal life. That's it, just one. The other 19, half of them will be dead in the next six months. And she died six months later. Couldn't believe it. She's 38 years old. Beautiful, tall, blonde. First date was running Green Lake. Wasn't even having a drink or anything like that. But I remember thinking... I'm going to have to figure something out. My fraternity brothers from University of Washington days have always said, Brooke, we're surprised you're not under the bridge somewhere with a bottle of whiskey because you've been through so much. Stuff. Well, I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm not going to succumb to that. I'm, not, I'm going to raise those two little boys. They already lost their mother. So a buddy of mine says to me, you ever heard of a gratitude journal? And I said, no. And as a matter of fact, how many people here have ever heard of a gratitude journal? Wow, pretty good show of hands. How many have heard of a journal? Even better. How many have ever even seen a journal? Okay, fantastic. So I had not heard of a gratitude journal. I was telling Gene. So I said, okay, so I did what a lot of people do. I go to Amazon, I get and I see the secret. So I get the secret journal and I get it and I put it on the shelf for three months. Ridiculous. What was the point? We've all done it. It's just, just so stupid. I start writing in it and I start seeing all these amazing things happen. It took me seven and a half minutes a day. And I can see everybody here is in phenomenal shape, less than eight minute abs. That's how fast it is. And I also said to Gene too, I'm going to start telling people, just write in your gratitude journal on the days you want to feel good. Because you're always going to feel good. And I mentioned to Daryl too, I did a talk at Burlington Chamber. And one of the things that I did is, I, is when I, went, I ended up developing my own, is I have a, what's called your daily number. It's real simple here. Day, date, daily number. Ten's the best day of your life, one's one of the worst days. That's how you assign your number for the day. You can run the whole range. And then you have your current events and then what you're grateful for, a little highlight of the day, and then your gratitude intentions is what you're going to be grateful for tomorrow. About three, three and a half minutes each side. So I was writing this journal and seeing it was making a big difference. I mentioned to Daryl, I was talking to the Burlington Chamber. I woke up that day, I was about a two or a three. I don't know what in the world was wrong. My mom that had died of cancer, had manic depressive things, and I think I got some of that depressive piece. It drove me crazy. I'll be darned if I'm going to take pills or medication, all that kind of stuff. That's what killed Dana. It was Vicodin and Oxycontin, as a matter of fact. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to figure out a way. So I went down, got my journal, went down to a Starbucks. I live in Bothell. And I wrote my gratitude journal for seven minutes and it bumped me up to about a five or six. I still wasn't quite feeling right. Went up to Burlington, probably 150 people at the chamber there. Really, really good crowd. Afterwards, I come up and you get to sit there. I've written some books, and so I'm signing the books and things. This lady comes up and she's crying. She goes, uh, my name is Janice. And I extended my hand, I said, I'm David. She goes, I know, I just heard you speak. And I, she says, you just changed my life. And she's got tears rolling down her cheeks. She says, can I give you a hug? So I said, you bet. And I gave her a hug and she kind of says, I can't even tell you what it was about what you did. Because it's going to get me too upset. But can I buy a journal and a book and a few things? And she says, but you've given me something really to have hope. And that's when I really realized this whole thing about gratitude is a healthy coping mechanism that can change your life. 
And I tell people all the time, if you want to get something that's going to work for you and it's not prescription medication, I also mentioned this to Gene, we're having the conversation. On the east side now, all these houses are broken into all the time. The cops come in, the, the computers and even the jewelry, it's all sitting there. What's going on here? The medicine cabinets are just stripped. All the medication. That's what's happened in this kind of world that we're in now. So I decided, you know what, I've got to do something about this and that's where this journal came in. So what I want to do is I want you just to think about this for a second. One to ten. Again, ten is the best day of your life. One is maybe one of the worst. So I want to just do a quick poll here and then we're going to do a little exercise. If you're between a one and a five, don't raise your hand. If you're having a tough day, I don't want to embarrass anybody in front of the group. But just by a show of hands, let's just go through the numbers. How many people here are six? Okay, how many are seven? Maybe a third of the room. Eight? Another half third. Nines? One nine Charlie. And ten. Okay. All right. So, um, Deanne, uh, can you help me pass these out? Does everybody have a pen? I'm going to give you a little, and actually, uh, Joe, can you pass out this side, please? If, everybody, if you need any pens, let me know. I've got some pens. This is a reproduction of the left-hand side of the journal. And as soon as everybody, does anybody need a pen? I've got extras. Hold on. Pens? Who needs pens? Donna, Doug. Any other pens? Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes. Here's what I'd like you to do. I just want you to do two things. I want you in two minutes to write down where it says, I'm so grateful for a couple of words, a couple of sentences of what you're grateful for at this very moment and then I'd like you to write down the highlight of your day. Now chances are that highlight of your day is from yesterday because it's early in the morning. So two minutes and go ahead and write that down. Thank you. Another minute. About 15 seconds. Okay, stop, and you can hang on to those later. Uh, would anybody like to share anything they're grateful for? Gene. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent. Any others? Deanna. Um, opportunity to be involved in health abuse children. Of my own children, my son Troy did a testimony last night with a big crowd of people just chronicling what God has done in his life for the last 10 years. Um, for my faith, my health, uh, my job, my grandchildren. I live in a beautiful home. I never wake up hungry. Excellent, excellent, Deanna. Um, yeah, you said Tyler, but you never said your name. Carmen. So, Carmen. Okay, Carmen. Anyway, I'm Tyler's mother, but I'm grateful for family. Last night we had this great dinner, and um, my daughter was there, who was a preschool special ed teacher, and I haven't seen her for three or four months. And then I had a niece 
and her son that was there, and I haven't seen her for a couple of years, and then another brother and sister-in-law that was there that we shared our Southeast Asia travel experience. Nice. So it was just, you know, family and food. Excellent, excellent, cool. Any highlights of the day anybody wants to share from yesterday? Jean. Um, we have a beautiful shady uh, part of our backyard, and the weather's been so gorgeous. Uh, we sit out there in the evenings, and that was one of my highlights of the day yesterday. Excellent. Here, have dinner, family, visit. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Any others? Daryl. Reorder. <laughs> I like that. That's, now there's right to be an I. That's great. It's not the order, it's the reorder. Jim, did you have one? Or Oh, okay, Jim. Yeah, I had uh, dinner last night with the ex-son-in-law we haven't had words with for two years. Wow. We established, uh, Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, I, I only have about five more minutes, and, and I... Uh, Barry? Two minutes. Oh, two, two minutes. Okay. Um, so let me tell you something. Well, first of all, let me just quickly pull the audience again. No one would say anything. You're one to five. How many sixes after this exercise? How many sevens? How many eights? And how many nines? And any tens? You'll always notice, I did a talk in, in Olympia yesterday, and there's always that bump up just by a two-minute exercise like that. So you can imagine how having this gratitude journal would make such a big difference. Now, let me mention one thing. Seven and a half minutes a day. People tell me all the time, God, you talk fast, you do this, you do that. I don't have time for this. And I always tell them, you know, it's like anything else, it's the effort you put into it. It's not that hard. And I mentioned this thing, only write on it the days you want to feel good. Seven and a half minutes a day, it'll change your life. It's such a healthy coping mechanism. And this is something I do a lot to prove to people, not to impress them, but you can do anything you want to. So Carmen, Sherry, Robin, Deanna, is it Christine? Krista. Krista, sorry. Donna, Jennifer, Doug, Charlie, Jean, Candy, Adrian, Rachel, Anna, Lisa, Barry, Tony, Tina, Doug, George, Jim, Jim, Roy, Tressa, Colin, Travis looks at me, <laughs> Travis, and Joe. The only reason I ever do that, I know it's some memory guy, I just pay attention and I focus and I really listen to people. And it's, it's that easy and I get so tired of people that are always saying, well I can't do it, I don't have enough time. And when I was running that big box over there, you saw that a lot and there's always some excuse. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so the point is, it's a healthy coping mechanism, and that's what can change you. So give it a shot. All that I, all that I ask you people, oh, and also B&I, I'm going to have Barry pass these out, was kind enough to give everybody one of these small books I have called uh, Gratitude Nuggets um, to Chew On. And it's just 50 little sayings and quotes just to kind of use as an inspiration. You can look at the whole thing at once, read one a day or whatever. So, But uh, he will pass that out. I will have flyers and some business cards and I've also got some books for sale. But here's the last thing I want to tell you that I want to leave you with. I want you to try this. And with all this nonsense about booze and, and pills and prescription medication and so forth, I tell people yeah, it's important to embrace gratitude. It's important to realize it takes as long as it takes. You know, I'm 62 years old. I know I don't look a day over 61. But the thing is, is that it takes as long. I, want, I should have started this 30 years ago. It doesn't matter. I've started it now. That's the important thing. Clean your brain out. Get rid of the junk. When you go back to those cars today, this windshield is huge. And here's the rearview mirror. Keep it about in that proportion. And yeah. now, if you see blue flashing lights in the rearview mirror, you may want to pull over. But <laughs> the thing is, is keep it in proportion. It's what's out front, which is really important. Okay. And then it's the gratitude journal and sharing gratitude. And the last thing I will tell you is, I learned how to fly years ago, and I was flying along down on ocean shores, and I was between clouds, and I wasn't supposed to be. And all of a sudden, the sun came in. I was trying to get out of the clouds, and it hit these clouds, and it was like this kaleidoscope, and I was going 150 knots. And I'm just hanging on to the yoke as hard as I can, going, I'm not even supposed to be here, but my eyes were just like this, and then, bam, I pop out of it, and I'm out by the ocean. There's the sand, there's the ocean, there's the sun coming in, a beautiful day at ocean shores. And I learned to turn to my right, and I went, wasn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life? Oh, I was flying by myself. <laughs> there's nobody there. So, the sharing, when you get something, the sharing is what really, really makes a difference. And that day, when I left Burlington, I was a nine. And all I'd done is written in my gratitude journal and talked to a bunch of fine folks like you. And I got in that car and drove back to Seattle with the biggest smile on my face because I'd made a difference that day. You've got to share it. 
Gratitude can transform you, it can change you, and it can save you. It can save you. It saved my life. It can save yours too. Thanks a lot.